Seattle's Lake Union is home to one of the most interesting forms of alternative housing in the city or anywhere, and that is its colony of floating homes or houseboats. Today we tend to romanticize the houseboat colony. It wasn't always this way. In the beginning, it was a cheap alternative form of housing for working stiffs, for people that couldn't afford to live in houses on the land. It was an alternative to the flop houses on Skid Road. Houseboating in Seattle dates to the end of the 19th century when fishermen and lumberjacks began building log floats and shacks on top of them along the Elliott Bay waterfront. Houseboat communities then developed on the Duwamish River, Lake Union, and Lake Washington. The Lake Washington community was more of a middle-class community. Grand houseboats, well-built, that centered around Madison Park and Leshy at the end of the cable cars. The Lake Union community was more of a working class community. Squatters building log floats and shacks uh, with materials that they either borrowed or paid little for at the lumber yards that surrounded Lake Union. The easiest way to build a houseboat, as in this one, was with a sprung roof. They would lay a beam or two lengthwise, and then they would bend ship's lath over the beams and nail them to the sides. During the bootleg era, the 1920s, houseboats were a scene for both the brewing of, of homebrew and also the sale of illegal liquor. One character had his houseboat way out in the lake with a quite a long zigzag pier, and that was his protection against being raided by the authorities. Of course, some of his customers, after they had imbibed in his brew, had trouble negotiating that, that zigzag dock, and he, I think he lost a few into the water. The history of houseboats in Seattle has been a history of a battle between the uplanders and the water dwellers over the existence of the houseboats because they were considered to be kind of a, a bohemian, low-class community surrounded by middle-class communities. And the only community left is the Lake Union community. And that community has had to battle for its very existence for a number of years. Terry Pettis was the most important person in saving Seattle's houseboats. He was executive secretary of the Floating Homes Association in the 1960s and 70s. This is his house. You can see the begonias that he, he loved. He was a newspaper man. He became a radical socialist, and learned a lot of political skills in the battles of the 30s and 40s, used those skills to save the houseboats, to organize the community, to fight for the existence of the houseboats, and fight for the preservation of Lake Union itself as a working urban lake. At the end of the 1960s, the Fairview Boat Works was replaced by an apartment house, this apartment house at the foot of Lynn Street. This was the opening gun in the battle for Lake Union. If the houseboaters, the upland communities, city council, and the newspapers hadn't been so outraged by this development, it would have resulted in the whole lake being walled off by over the water apartment houses and office buildings. As a result of the good fight, we have preserved the lake with houseboats, with marinas, other water needing uses. Living on a houseboat is really unlike living any other place in the city. You're halfway between downtown and the university, and yet when you walk out on the dock, you're in another world. When you uh, arrive, you don't park your car in front of your house or in your garage and go right into your house. You have to walk down the dock past all your neighbors saying hello, and it, it's really a, a neighborhood in an old-fashioned sense. The houseboat community has changed a lot. It's an upscale neighborhood now. It's quite expensive. 
but it's still wonderful to see the mixture of the old and the new on many of the docks. You can still see the old sprung roof houseboats mixed in with the new ones. The survival of the houseboat community represents the preservation of an historic use of this wonderful urban lake.